Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope that you are doing so very well. Today I'm bringing you a wrap-up, but it's a special wrap-up because it's going to contain both my August and September books. Coming at you late as always. I did read quite a lot of books in this time frame, however it is going to be very condensed because probably about 14 of these were just contemporaries. I just became addicted and I needed to read a lot of them, but none of them I would really necessarily recommend. Like they're okay, but they're all about like three stars our books for me and I didn't even put them on Goodreads because I was reading them so fast so in an effort to conserve time just gonna list all of them out and maybe tell you a thing or two about a couple of them. <laughs> like I said my life has been very busy and I've also gotten the habit of not putting things on Goodreads when I'm reading them which is really bad so reviews don't get done it's fine whatever. Let's start off by reading off the contemporaries that I did read. <laughs> First off, we have Nantucket Blue and Nantucket Red by Lila Howard. I grew up going to Martha's Vineyard, so I was like, Nantucket, sounds great! And they were fine. They were just like I said, just meh books. You Before Anyone Else by Julie Cross. I literally remember nothing about that book, so you can see how memorable that was. Heartbreakers and Paper Hearts by Ali Novak. They started on Wattpad. And they were fun. They were fine. Of the two, I liked Paper Hearts better. And then also, My Life with the Walter Boys by Ali Novak, also from Wattpad, which is one I'm actually going to talk about because it literally had the worst slash most unsatisfying ending of a contemporary romance I've ever read. I think I gave this 2.5 stars, might move it down to 2 because it was so fun and it was a great contemporary, but it left off on a cliffhanger and then I go to the author's website and she's like, well, I wrote a sequel on Wattpad, but this book is different than that and I'm not writing a sequel. Excuse you. So that was very unsatisfying. It was literally the worst ending. I was so annoyed after I read it. I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm done. And last up in this category, literally all of Miranda King Nelly's books. They were all on Hoopla and I read all of them. There are eight of them and they are Catching Jordan, Stealing Parker, Things I Can't Forget, Racing Savannah, Breathe Andy Breathe, Jesse's Girl, Defending Taylor, and Coming Up for Air. I read Coming Up for Air first and it's probably still my favorite of the bunch. There was a bunch of best friends to lovers in all of these books and famous slash important guy falls in love with a normal girl. There was a lot of that in this. So they were just like right up my alley. They were not anything special. They were written very poorly and there were some problematic things as well as some really good and interesting interesting issues addressed. A lot of them deal with a lot of really tough subjects. For example, Stealing Parker deals with the fact that her mom came out as a lesbian and basically her whole church disowned her as a result of that. So there's a lot of deep things being dealt with, but there's also a lot of problematic things within some of these things and attitudes, especially in Catching Jordan. It's about a girl who is the quarterback of the football team and there's just like a lot of things where it's like locker room talk and you're like, no, can you actually just not? A lot of these are all related and they like all have each other's siblings in them. It takes place all in this town and all of these people go to the same high school and there's mentions of all of them all throughout. I don't know if I would even really recommend them unless you're on a contemporary kick. Pretty much all of those I would give like a three star, maybe a 2.5 for some of them, maybe a 3.5 for some of them. None of them are breaching four star or five star range so I didn't really want to just like talk about all of them. I don't want to waste the time. <laughs> but if you really want to look them up you can do that on Goodreads. Also within that time frame I started and DNF'd Little Women. We had a live show about it and I was just not a fan. Maybe I'll pick it up sometime Time, but I would just set it aside for now because it was not my time. Now we'll begin the books I will actually talk about. First up is First and Then by Emma Mills. I got this from Book Outlet, I believe, and I also showed this in my haul and talked about how I've watched Emma's videos for a very long time, so it was really fun to read this book finally. It's about a girl named Devin, and she's just trying to, like, get through high school, but then her cousin becomes her adopted brother, and this guy named Ezra is just annoying the crap out of her, but maybe there's just, like, some sparks and some chemistry there. <laughs> it's a really fun contemporary read. There are a couple things in here that I was like, can you not say that? That's a bit problematic. This book could have been higher up on my list, but it was not because of things like that. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, might move it down to a 3.5. I'm excited to read more books from her. Next up is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This was recommended to me by Elena, and I love Elena so much. She recommended this book to me because it is a hate to love trope, and it did not disappoint. It was not the hate to love trope where the guy is just a douche. He is a douche a couple of times, but there is a lot of like mutual hatred within them, so it's good. This is about Lucy and Josh and their assistants to 
co-CEOs of this, two publishers that merged together, and they are very opposite. They've had a lot of quips back and forth, a lot of hatred between them, but then one day they kiss and they're like, well, maybe it's not hatred. Lucy could be a really annoying narrator at times, and sometimes you were like, are you an idiot for real? But overall, it was a fun read. I enjoyed it. This is also very new adult. Just know that going in. I gave this a four out of five stars. Next up is Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway. This was also recommended to me by Elena. This is about a girl named Emmy and a boy named Oliver, and they were childhood best friends. But 10 years ago, Oliver was kidnapped by his dad, and they hadn't seen him since. And they find him and bring him home. Emmy takes it on to really help him and become his friend, because he's still trying to remember their friendship from 10 years ago, even though she remembers all of it. And it's really sad, but really good. Deals with a lot of loss and love, and it's a concept that I'm sure has probably been explored somewhere, but I have not seen it a lot. There's really good friendships in this book. It's good. You should read it. I gave this a four out of five stars. Next up is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. This is about a girl named Paige, and her boyfriend of a couple months dies in a swimming accident. About a year later, she's decided enough is enough. I'm done shutting people out. And her first step in this process is to go out with her longtime crush, Ryan, as well as get more involved in school. But before anything with Ryan can move forward, she meets his cousin Max, and he convinces her to join the quiz bowl team. And they strike up a friendship and maybe something a little bit more while she's still trying to deal with all of this stuff and pain and heartache and fears that her boyfriend's death caused. It's really sweet. It's really sad. There's a lot of intense emotions and intense scenes in this book. I don't know what I would say trigger warning for, but definitely death is talked about a lot in this book. So know that going in, but I really liked it. This is a huge step up from Emery Lord's other book that I read called Open Road Summer. There were some mentions of the characters from Open Road Summer in here and I was like, oh, bless. And now I'm wondering if any of those characters are mentioned in When We Collided since that was the first Emery Lord book I read, but at the time was her newest release. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And also this cover design, hey? Hey, hey, hey. Next up is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This is also an Alcrate exclusive cover, so if you're like, I haven't seen that before, that would be why. You should go watch my Alcrate video where I got it. I was buddy reading this with Jesse from Jesse the Reader, and as of this video, he still has not finished this book. This is about a girl named Eliza, and she has a very popular webcomic that she does art for and story for and everything, and that really takes over her whole life. In public, she is very quiet, very unassuming, and is just trying to get through high school. Then she meets this boy named Wallace and finds out that he loves the monstrous sea and she's like maybe I could be friends with him and I could pretend like a fan of this and we could just be friends. Then they get to know each other a little bit more, there's a bit of chemistry there, and then she's like I am gonna tell him finally I think I can reveal myself to him. But before she can, her identity is leaked to the world and that creates a whole new mess of chaos. This book was so so good. People compare it to Fangirl, and I would say I like it even better than Fangirl. These characters are just really phenomenal and really fantastic, and there's art within this that's so beautiful that I'm pretty sure the author also did, so props to this author for being amazing. And you hear the premise and you're like, wow, that sounds good, but it's so much harder hitting than that. So before you read this, I would say trigger warning for loss, for suicide ideation, for depression, for anxiety, for death. I think that's it. This book was so good, and I really want to reread it and do a review, but I like literally never have time to do a review, so I'm just like, meh. Should have taken notes, but oh, uh, it was so good. It dealt with so much, and it was just by everything, and it was also so cute. I love it so much. I gave this a five out of five stars. And last but not least is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This book was so freaking good. This is about a man named Kavoth. It is him telling his story to the storyteller, so self narrating his whole life, which has been crazy and amazing and there's just been a lot that's happened to him. Meanwhile, there's some other things going, some other things happening, even though Kavoth has tried to escape that life, it's coming back for him. This is a fantasy book, so there's just a lot of fantasy elements, a magic system, all of that. It's phenomenal. I heard a lot of good things about this book. People have raved about it and been like, this book is amazing. This book is so good. Oh my gosh. Everyone was 100% right. I buddy read this with my friend Des, who is not on booktube, and he liked it a lot. And he reads, but not a ton. So even if you're not a big reader, even though this book is massive, is very easy to read, very easy to get through, very easy to read in just like a couple days, because that's what I did. I just love this so much. The magic system was so simple and was so easy to understand. And the plot was also phenomenal 
phenomenal and just really great and gripping and it's also interesting having Kavo as a narrator because he is an unreliable narrator. Things are a little bit expanded and exploited in his favor sometimes. Definitely would recommend. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. And that's it on the books that I read in August and September. Hopefully my October wrap up is not this late. Yes. If you want to hear more about any of those contemporaries I just mentioned, I will try to remember for you. If you ask me questions, let me know down below what you read during those months, how your last two months of reading have been. Also, just let me know how you are. It's been a while since we've had this chat with the wrap up, so let me know how you're doing. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.